Please welcome Peter Leibinger, Trumpf. My name is Peter Leibinger. I'm the CTO and Vice Chair of the Trumpf Group. Quant is unique in three distinct ways. Firstly, because they use lithium niobate as their core material, which enables them to do quantum devices that are mass producible and can integrate with silicon. Secondly, they are the only quantum company that I know that does both quantum sensing and quantum computing, which will enable them to do a seamless connection between the two. Thirdly, they're uniquely successful. In just four years, they build a business that has a broad technological base and is successful commercially in the market already. Breaking the wall to quantum-based data processing. Michael Furch, Quant. Hello, everyone. This is the year 2045. May I introduce myself? I'm the virtual counterpart of Michael, the founder and CEO of Quant. In the next few minutes, he will explain to you how photonic quantum sensing and photonic quantum computing changed the world and how the union realized me. Enjoy. Thank you very much for being here in 2022. Thank you. It's my pleasure to take you on a journey of what will be possible by using photonic quantum technology to do information processing and what the contribution of, of quant is. The idea behind all our products is very simple. We use light as an information carrier for quantum bits, for qubits. And the reason for that is very simple. Light can form super robust qubits, which can even survive under ambient room temperature conditions. In order to take advantage of this, we've developed our quantum photonics framework. So what we do is, all our product starts with the generation of light from electricity, and at the end of each product, we reconvert the light back into electricity, into data and information for our customers. And in the middle part, the photonics part, this is where we generate our qubits, this is where we manipulate them, where we let them interact. With this framework, we up to date have realized three different types of sensors and one quantum computing chip. Since we are an enabler to a larger technology group, um, we choose the business model Quant Insight and always cooperate with our partners. Now let's have a look into our products. In our first product line, we develop novel particle sensors. The trick here is to use quantum states in order to extract multiple information simultaneously from the analyzed particles. For example, the size, the speed, or even the shape of the particles can be analyzed. Very important to our customers is that we can deliver this information in real time and therefore optimizing their processing technologies. As an example, we are currently working on the controlled controlling of bioreactors to produce massively algae, uh, which then later on can bind CO2 or, for example, produce substitutes for oil. In our second product line, uh, we develop atomic gyroscopes. Now, here the critical figure of merit is that we can reach the same sensitivity as large spanning gyroscopes have already today, but on a very small footprint. Currently, we're preparing these sensors to be integrated into smaller satellites, so-called CubeSats. By this extended control of the satellites, it becomes feasible to establish an all-optical a connection between a ring of satellites spanning the Earth and therefore enabling high data communication. The rocket launch is already scheduled for 2026 and we are looking forward to this, I can't tell you. Um, in our third product line, we are developing brain-machine interfaces. So these are faint magnetic field sensors that can pick up the magnetic fields that are created by whenever we think, by the action of our neurons. And in our first development we are focusing on to support together with our partner disabled people who for example lost an arm or a leg to give their a natural control on their, on their artificial limbs and we plan that the first prototypes will be available in 2025. In our last product line we focus on quantum com computing. In order to realize the enormous amount of qubits which is required to carry out meaningful calculations, we develop our own material based on silicon and lithium niobate. By this, we can realize that all the essential elements which are required to build such a chip can be brought on the single monolithic piece of chip. Moreover, 
we optimize the whole architecture to be compatible with complex classical problems. For example, to optimize routing problems in logistics or to simulate ammonia, as an example for, chemi uh, for chemistry, um, to identify more natural production methods. So you see, by using photonics for quantum information processing, we can have a huge impact to our daily life. But the real fun starts when we combine them. Just imagine what happens if we combine our brain-machine interface to our quantum computing processor. Since they're all optically, we can combine them seamlessly without changing the qubit system. <coughs> and this can create a natural ring between our human brain and an artificial one. And this is exactly our vision. We are quant. We are revolutionizing the quality, how machines analyze the environment, people notice information, and the way humans think. Thank you very much. No, 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 I feel, are you real? Uh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, 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 sorry, yes. Or do, does no, your no, no, avatar no, no, no. want to take the Q&A? Oh, that would be great, right? Yes, okay, well, let's go straight to the Q&A session, no worries at all. <laughs> He's real, I can attest, really. Um, so who would like to start with this fascinating uh, project? Yes, Hemai, please, can we have the microphone? Thank you very much. I'll start with complete ignorance of quantum technology. So my question is, how, which of those applications you discussed are you furthest along uh, uh, in the technology development, and what is the biggest risk associated with completing that? All right, that's a, that's a fair question. So the closest to the market is the particle sensor, which we already have at the stage to rent. So it's rented by our customers, and it will be complete the prototype status by the end of the year. Actually. Well, there are always engineering risks, but from a fundamental point of view, there, from this product perspective, there is no risk to bring it to the market because we already integrated it with our customers. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Next question, please. Yes, Geneviève, can we have the microphone? Thank you so much to the microphone operators here. Thank you. Good presentation. About the satellite and the use of quantum in the satellite, how far can the cube satellite be from one another to communicate with one another because you're communicating through light, isn't it? Exactly. So this is a very good question. So first of all, we are only targeting the low Earth orbit, so we're not going far out. And then it's a question of how many satellites shall form the ring. And I'm, I'm, I mean, what we, we have at the moment, uh, we have a number in mind, which is up to our partners, but we can't disclose it, sorry for this. We don't know at the moment. We have to f basically bring the first satellites into the, the space. We have to test whether what we qualified on Earth is also valid, and this will determine the amount of satellites which will form then later on the ring. The good thing, so, is the CubeSats are cheap, and they can be brought easily to space. So in that sense, um, this might be a compromise here. Mm -hmm. We have a firework or, or fireworks of question here, please, to start with. Here and there, if the jury doesn't have another one, please. Thank you for presenting a really interesting technology platform. The question is regard to the BCI component, where you're doing micro or very nanoscale type of magnetic field sensors. Um, on a general, on a grocery scale, this has done, been done in MEG technology. So I'm curious is that how are you going to resolve some of the cross magnetic from the neuron potentiations that you might find at that level? compared to other technologies like um, electron sensor grids and other type of spike type of sensor systems. Okay. Um, this would be a very in-depth techno uh, technological discussion, but on, on short uh, notice, so um, we are not targeting any kind of existing magnetic field sensors. So the place where we see the future of this product is in a region where you are, uh, for you as an expert, way beyond the Pico Tesla. Uh, the hundreds of Pico Tesla, this is the region, and at ambient condition. This is the important thing. Um, we know that there is existing technology, it's either cryogenic or it doesn't meet the required resolution. We have a jury question. I have to give them the priority. Don't hate me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry to elaborate a little bit about competition in your field. <laughs> okay, so on each of the product line, there are individual competitors, and uh, they're enormous. So, uh, but the good thing is we found on each product line unique 
uh, USPs, how you would probably call them, which uh, gives us advantage to our competitors. For example, in the quantum computing, we are the only one pursuing on that kind of material. All our competitors are using standard materials which are not optimized for photonics quantum computing. And the same is true, for example, for the magnetic field sensors and uh, the gyroscopes as well as for the particle sensor. And I'm really sorry that we have three seconds left. I cannot take your question. Very sorry for that, but you have the opportunity to certainly to mingle the network later on. Thank you very much. So thank you very much. Thank you. Don't forget your avatar.